What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Backpacking Podcast. John Kelly here with you tonight. I'm riding solo. Jeremiah's taking the night off, and uh, I'm here by myself with you guys and an amazing guest tonight. But before we get started on anything, before we do anything, I do want to say we have 55 comments, and we just started the podcast. So you guys have gotten on here quick, and you're already leaving comments all over the place, which is awesome. But got a big announcement. Big announcement. If you were on uh, Instagram this afternoon, you might have seen uh, I posted something about a huge announcement that we're making tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and make it right here at the beginning so everybody knows what's going on. Uh, April 1st, we're going to have Rob Pelton on the podcast. Now, that in itself is a great announcement, but we're going to be live at JH Outdoors in Lexington, Kentucky, doing an in person live live stream. So, we're going to somehow try and figure out how to do a podcast with a with a studio audience in front of us and live stream it at the same time. This could be the greatest failure in the history of the Backpacking Podcast, but we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. Um, should be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm going to do my best to keep up with comments and stuff, but we have one of the most interesting uh, guests that we've had on the show before. We brought him back because he's getting ready to attack a beast of a trail in the PCT, and we can't wait to get him on here. So without further ado, and without me talking anymore, let's bring on Frozen. What's up, man? What's going on, dude? Thanks for having me again. Not yeah, tired of me yet, I guess. Huh? <laughs> Absolutely, dude. We got to have you back on here. You know, <laughs> last time we were on here, we talked about kind of the transformation that you overwent when you went through the AT. Um I remember watching those videos, which I still say um, you and maybe a couple other people to this day, I think, have the best um, video series of your AT hikes. Uh, a lot of yours is based on how it ended because you did this incredible <laughs> ending to your hike on it. But back then you had said something, I may do the PCT, I may not. And for a while it looked like eh, maybe this isn't going to happen. But you've decided to go after it. What made you go, I I'm going to attack this thing? Oh, it was always going to happen. I mean, yeah. I said it on Bald Pate Mountain in Maine that I'm going to hike it within five years. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, though, John, it was uh, a struggle. You know, we had COVID, could have got laid mm -hmm. off there. And then we have inflation now, could have just not saved up the money. But I just just got the money like two three months ago and we're going we're going baby pct nice nice yeah so let me ask you this question since we're on the topic of money what what are you budgeting month by month because how many are you, are you taking six months five months how long are you planning i to think this in? i got five months i got 141 days to do this thing um a little bit outside the zones people tend to figure or uh, to end in september like the end of september i got to finish before September 1st, because uh, I got two stepkids, nine and 10. So one's going to middle school, one's going to elementary. And my wife is just rocking this whole thing. And it's, it, I'm just walking from Mexico to Canada. She's the one taking care of three kids by herself. So right. She's being really supportive. I just want to be there for the school and to help drive kids around for their activities. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I hear that because uh, I'm in the same boat that you are. I've got two kids. Hiking yep. isn't as easy to get away for as it used to be. Nope, uh, <laughs> not at all. So how has that transition been for you from being uh, a single guy who could just basically hike whenever you feel like it to, to now you've got this family that yeah. you got to think about? It's been uh, it's been great, to be honest with you. My uh, my uh, my stepdaughter, Scarlett, she's gone to the Dolly Sods with me. We've done some day hikes together. She absolutely loves it. I play video games with my stepson and me, uh, Logan, my my youngest. He's almost two. He'll be two in May while I'm on the trail. We just did his first two mile hike and he did not want picked up. He just wanted to do the whole thing. So he's taken after his dad already. It looks like that's really cool, man. That's it really is. Cool. So just seeing that just melts my heart. Yeah. Oh, I can bet. So are my all the kids. Heart. <laughs> <laughs> so are all the kids in with you on the hiking thing? Do they all get into they, it? Uh, yeah, they do. They they watch the videos too, which I think is hilarious. Even Logan, he's like, "Dada," you know. He he knows. Oh, that's he cool. doesn't know why I'm in the TV. I don't think, but he knows that I'm on TV. So that is really cool, man. Yeah, I know. I know. For me, my son, if I if I say I'm going hiking or camping or backpacking, whatever it is, he immediately goes, "Can I go? Yeah, can I go?" 
And it's hard to tell them no for some of these trips. You know, it's just it's just hard to do that because you can't always take your son with you on some of these trips. But uh, right. what kind of trips have you done with your kids so far? Um, really, it's just been a couple overnights at my local park at Raccoon Creek. And then, like I said, we did a three day trip, short, short, t- like two day trip, I guess, um, with my stepdaughter, Scarlett. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So yeah. back to the PCT for a second. Mm hmm. How much are you budging? I, I think we we talked about it and we kind of got talking about family stuff. Yeah, yeah, I went off on the month by month for that one. <clears throat> so I saved up first. I saved up six months of my salary. So my wife didn't know I was not financially here. I want to be able to you know support my family. That took the longest. That's we we're in a big house now. We got a three bedroom house. Moved up from you know something that's you know no sidewalk to a, a neighborhood. So especially during COVID prices. So got six months salary. I won't get into how much that's costing, but. I'm budgeting uh, $10,000 to complete the hike, which is your average money spent in the post-COVID days. Used to be like 6000 before COVID, but you know how prices are. Everything's well, just blown up. When it costs as much to eat at McDonald's as it does Red Lobster. Um, yeah, like 25 yeah. bucks. Like what? Like, <laughs> it doesn't make any what kind sense. Of, what kind of double cheeseburger is $25 now? Yeah, I'm right there with you. It's crazy how much uh, everything costs right now. We're actually, my wife and I are actually looking to buy a house right now. I took a new position uh, at a yeah. new church that I'm working at, and I gotta, I gotta find a place to live. And they're about a hundred and twenty thousand dollars more than they were two years ago. Phew. Yep, mm-hmm. it's it's absolutely yeah. Our insane. house, our house is like two hundred k more than when we bought it in 2020. But you don't want to sell we, it because the interest rates are so high. Oh no, I ain't selling yeah. this. Our yeah. interest rate like two, three percent or something ridiculous. Yeah. 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 It's insane. Just like mm-hmm. the post COVID blues that we've got right now with all the, the costs of everything. It's crazy. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, what are the highlights that you're really excited about hitting while you're on this trail? Because I've watched think, a lot of people's videos and stuff. I'm just curious the things that you're really excited about getting to. Uh, Washington's going to be a huge state. Um, before that, I think I'm really looking forward to the Sierra section, you know, 700 to to 900 or whatever it is. That's just, I'm going to have to go in a little bit early to the Sierra. So the mountains, normally people go on like June 15th, known as Ray day for Ray Jardine. Yeah. Um, that gives you like a limited snow experience, but I got to kind of scoot there through there like mid to late May. So I'm in for some snow hiking, which I'm not totally comfortable doing, but you know we'll learn as I go, right? Well, post holing, right? I mean, you, you got a yeah. Post like... holing and sun cups, or sun cups are apparently real fun. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Now, what's going to happen if you uh, you get stuck in some of those things? You have to sit out for a few days to wait for the snow to kind of come down a little bit. Yeah, there's a there's a general store uh, right outside Kennedy Meadows, which is like mile 702. It's like right it's where everybody gets their like bear canisters and their winter gear kind of out for the Sierra. Um, you can camp there for free. You just have to pay like the general store prices to eat and stuff, which is fine. It's totally yeah. cool. Uh, there's Wi-Fi and electric there. Um, but I guess I'll just hold up there. I'm trying to go a little bit slow to start. And then, you know, Oregon, Washington will kind of barrel through those and pick up the miles there. Nice. Do you expect to uh, find yourself in a tramley like you did in the AT or you think this is going to be a little more by yourself? I was just thinking that the other day because like I didn't think I was going to hike with anybody on the AT and I ended up like finishing with six other people. But I just I don't know how I can meet a bunch of people that are as cool as my last tramley. You know what I mean? Like I have these friends that are forever friends now. Like we just got a, a mountain house and had a hot tub party and stuff. You know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah, I saw that on uh, in Tennessee. Yeah, and um, I just like, man, there can't be that many cool people in the world that I come across. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, actually, uh, I we'll look, see. I want to look that picture up on Instagram because that was a great shot of you guys. <laughs> and I have a story to tell you about one of those guys. Let me see if I can find the picture because, um, I actually had, one of my good friends went to college with one of your buddies. Was it Marka? Uh, I'm not sure. He's the younger guy. Um, Sam. Find it. It might be Sam. Res- he's blonde. He went to. Did he, get, did he go to Johnson University? I don't know. <laughs> that never okay, came okay, up. Okay, here we go. I'm pulling the picture up. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at this real quick. Okay. The guy on the right. The guy in the yellow. Yeah, that's that's our resident daddy. Okay, well, resident AKA daddy. Sam. He went, he went to college with one of my really good friends. 
How crazy is that, man? So like, so like when he started his AT hike, my friend Rob goes, "You need to watch my friend Sam hike this trail." Like, he goes, yeah. "I know you're big into the AT." He goes, "You need to watch him." And so I'm watching him, and about halfway through it, I'm watching your videos, and he's in one of the videos. <laughs> yeah, I met him early too. Oh yeah, like within yeah. the first two weeks, I met him. It's just, it's just funny, like the small, the world. small world, you know? Yeah. Because they went mm-hmm. to college together in Tennessee. <laughs> and uh yeah it's just nuts it's nuts so what do you think's gonna happen this time around you think you think you're gonna hit a tramley or i have no idea i'm gonna go into it not expecting anything because that really worked well for me on the at and whatever happens happens you know say yes to opportunities and go from there right uh all things outdoors jeremy said john we should meet him on the jmt <laughs> should <laughs> is that gonna line up with your timeline uh, that might be a little early. Uh, okay. I was thinking next year, but you know, I'm gotcha. gonna have to work out to get ready for that. There you go. Uh, yeah, JMT is no joke. <laughs> no. So you, uh, what was the what was the permit situation like for you? Um, do people get turned down for the PCT? Yeah, um, I was stressed about the permit situation. It's gotten better, I think, over the years. I think um, the way it originally worked was people would open 7,000 like Chrome browser tabs and each browser tab would have a different place in line to get your permit. So you'd have, you know, people with four, five, six computers at work with hundred Chrome tabs each, just spamming refresh, trying to get your permit. But this time uh, you register and you're assigned a random time to log in to the PCTA portal. From there, you know, based on your, your number in line, so to speak, you could choose a date between March one and May 31st. So, okay. Worked out for me. Yeah. Sounds I didn't like have it. any problem. And they're well, always, you know, the permits are always freeing up after that. Cause there's two permit periods, but you know, people like, Oh, I can't do this. And they just release it. And then they just appear on the portal. Yeah. So I think it's a good system. I do. I really do. Well, I've heard a lot of people will sign up for it and then just back out. Yeah, I think people want to see what it's like for next year, if that makes any sense. So yeah. you like drop like 15, 20 people within the first week. But, okay. Yeah. So how many now in comparison to the, the AT is probably one of the most crowded trails on the planet, if not the most crowded trail on the planet. Um, I didn't see a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? I didn't see a lot of people, to be honest with you. On the Appalachian Trail, you didn't? Uh-huh. Nope. Wow. I went early, though. Oh, that's true. You were out in what, February? Yeah, end of February. Oh yeah, you you got out way early. Um, you also had to you also had to deal with the snow and ice. A little bit, not when much. You hiked in that, so just like l- one or two days. That was it. Well, let me ask you this because you're a hammock guy. I am. Are you? How much? Are you gonna be able to take a hammock at all on this one? I, I probably you can't do could. It in the desert. I probably could. You know, hang up between two cacti, but that's not that's not my deal. I want to like I, I'm I like I get this question all the time actually, so let me address it. But uh, and I I've been hammock camping for many years now. I, I know the hammock almost inside and out. You know, I've spent 120 nights just on the AT in the hammock. I want to learn a tent now. Like I just figured out you can shove a pair of socks down in your foot box for your quilt, and then you can yeah. cover that hole up that you know, forms whenever yeah. you do that, when you make the foot box, someone told me that like, I'm a, I'm a complete and utter noob when it comes to tent camping, but I can do it in the hammock all the time. You know what I mean? Right. And that's cool. You know, I'm looking forward to being able to talk about the experiences, not only the hammock, but the tent. And maybe, you know, when I get back, let's try a tarp, you know, let's get all three of the shelters, see if we can, you know, get them all down with the same amount of experience oh, I'm yeah. down for that. Well, here's the, you know, you, you were actually the reason I bought a dream hammock Darien. Yeah. Um, I got that back in 2019. They're so good. It's, They're very comfortable. It's yeah. about to need to be replaced at this point. Like it's really? the fabric's starting to, you know, I, I'm afraid it's one of these days I'm going like, yeah, to fall right through it, you know, and yeah. <laughs> I hear you. that'll be a wonderful evening. Um, <laughs> but uh, my AT hammock's still working. Oh I just, yeah. I wanted to try something different. So I tried a monolite fabric, but it's, it's working great. Nice. So, so how do you yeah. like the monolite? Um, I prefer the pack size because monolite doesn't like really squish down a lot like right. um, Robic, for instance, but uh, yeah. it's all right. I mean, I you can see through it. If you want to look, you want to look, but you know, the tarp covers you up for the most part. Yeah. So the, what is the weight savings on that compared to your, your normal hammock? It's like 0.2 ounce per square yard difference. So it's okay. not a huge weight savings, 
but it, you know, it's just to try something and be able to talk about something new, like I said before. So yeah, yeah, I get yeah. that. I absolutely get that. So when you went before, uh, I think you started out with a Z Packs uh, backpack, and you moved to a. Did you move to light AF? Light AF, yeah. On the AT, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I needed some extra space early on. I was planning on like wearing more clothes in the beginning, and everything was fitting fine in a thirty-five liter. And then it got warm. I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna have to store all these extra clothes just in case." And I'm glad I did, but I ran out of room real quick. Yeah, you know, it just made more sense to not go frameless early on. Yeah. Now, did you get Chris from Light AF to uh, hook you up with some sweet swag for this trip? I did. Yeah, the that towel back there, uh he sent it to me. I'm trying out a new um actually, I'm in my PJ, so I'm, I'm at my work attire, but uh, nobody judges check this on out. The show. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh this is a new um I forget what he's calling this. It's it's lighter than Dyneema composite fabric. I don't know if he's planning on making backpacks out of this, but we're going to try with a fanny pack and it's it's lighter than DCF. Okay. So as long as the durability is there, we might see a new fabric when it comes to backpacking soon. Is it is it that is that that ultra? Is it part of the ultra family? It's part of the ultra family, yes. Yeah, I think I think like Ben PME McMillan's or something that like too. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Ben McMillan's trying that with uh, food bags. There you go. So that's some good stuff, yeah. man. And I'll, now, I'll beat this up, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Oh, guaranteed, you're gonna beat it up out mm-hmm. there. <laughs> now, what part of this trail intimidates you, if any? The Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> Sierra's like, because that it that's like okay. How long are you gonna spend through here? This this determines if I'm gonna complete the trail or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you get a big snowstorm in May, I'm I'm screwed because I can't stop. <laughs> I got to go through it. Yeah. You know. Well, and I'm I'm hoping for you that you don't have the the fires that so many people mm-hmm. have had over the last few years. I know Kyle O'Grady last year. Yeah, I just talked with him on his podcast a couple months yeah. ago or a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's yeah. He, yeah. I can't imagine like getting to a place and like, okay, gotta go into town, find a bus, walk backwards, you know. Yeah, I don't you get know, to man. Oregon. Yeah. You get to Oregon, and it's like, well, you're done. Right. I mean, yeah. that's just. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, gosh, that's rough. That's rough. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping for you that you're gonna be one of those guys that doesn't have to worry about that stuff. I think um, as long as I can get through the Sierra on time, you know, within like the two to two, two and a half weeks or whatever it's gonna take me, I think I'm ahead of the curve. Because you see the fires in late May, June, definitely mm-hmm. July, and that's when the big trail closures. I mean, I know that this isn't going to be a, a, what do we call it, a purist hike where I'm seeing every blaze or every marker on the trail or every mile. Um, the The goal for this hike is to complete as much of the trail with continuous footsteps as I can. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. going to beat myself up if there's a fire closure. What can I do? I'm going to try to find another trail, and if I have to road walk, I have to road walk, but... I don't want to be skipping giant sections that I don't have to. Like if there's a fire and I can backtrack 10 miles, I'm going to do that and then come back. I'm going to try to complete as much as I can. Oh yeah. And that's good. Cause we just had somebody ask the question. Uh, I saw that. Yeah. What, what's your, what's your fire bypass Jeff. strategy? So yeah, Jeff's a good guy. He is. Jeff's great. He's on here all mm-hmm. the time. Yep, so, I see him all the time in my comments too. Oh yeah. So let me ask you, uh, what has been your wife's uh what what has it been like for her when you talked about this like when you asked her about doing it what was how did the conversations go down because that's a yes that's a big yes. ask it is it is and and she is just i think that's what why we took so long to meet you know we just met like probably seven years ago got married five years ago um yeah she's has an amazing five woman years already it has can you believe it I can't. Dang, man. I can't. Yeah, we had our honeymoon. Years. We had our honeymoon right after right before COVID. So, wow. Yeah. Um Yeah, so the conversation came up. She knew before we got married that this was something that I was interested in. I never thought she'd actually let me go on the hike, but <laughs> here we are. Um she's raised two kids um alone uh without the father before. So she kind of knows what she's getting into with two young with, you know, with, with Logan and everything. Um, I do plan to come back for the birthdays in May. So that'll, that'll take some pressure off, but you know, it's a lot, it's going to be a lot. Like I said, I'm just walking from Mexico to Canada. She's doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. 
What What do you think it's going to be like for you? Like, I know, because I've talked to my wife about doing the JMT next year. And uh, just being gone for one month, I'm thinking, man, I'm going to miss my kids. I'm going to miss my wife. Being gone for five months, how are you preparing yourself for that? I don't, that's a, I don't that's know. That's hard, man. <laughs> yeah. I think that's going to be the biggest struggle for this hike. Uh, I just, you know, I miss my kids after, you know, just a simple overnight. I was like, oh, I can't wait to see my kids driving home and stuff. But I don't know. It's it's something that I, you know, if I want to do this hike, that I got to get my mind elevated above that issue and just, you know, be there as much as I can. I got a couple um, extra milliamps of battery banks that, you know, I can just, you know, FaceTime or whatever I need to do out there as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's big. I mean, and the nice thing is there's there's service everywhere almost anymore. It's yeah. it's hard to find places where you don't have some kind of service. Yeah, so, I got a Garmin in reach. It has a two-way communication app now, so we can we can be sure I have signal all the time. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So what gear are you taking on this hike that you did not take on your AT hike? Uh, let's see the difference. A lot of the, a lot of the gear is the same, um, you know, same quilts. Um, it's a different shelter, obviously. I said I'm using a tent, so it's a Z-Pax Plex Solo. Taking a full-framed light AF backpack this time, 40 liter. Um, bear canister, ice axe, micro spikes, which are completely... I, I've never hiked with bear canisters or, you know, an ice axe, but I have to in the Sierra. Yeah. And then other than that, I'm trying to think. Everything's pretty much the same, you know. The pad is a Nemo tensor. It's a wide. Oh, yeah. But, you uh, got to go with a wide Everything pad. else. Yeah, I've noticed that because <laughs> I, I, I toss and turn like a rotisserie chicken when I'm out <laughs> there. But, yeah, I'm just constantly in a circle, a yeah. perpetual circle. Uh, like but other that. than that, everything's, you know, everything's, I'm so dialed in with my gear over the years. It's just, you know, you tweak it a little bit. So, well, you've hiked, you've hiked a few trails in your time. A little bit. Yeah. So let's, let me ask you what, can you run down the long trails that you've done at this point? Obviously the AT is the longest, but what are, some what are we ones? counting as long? What over we'll what? Things like over. 75 and up. We'll say 75 miles and up. All right. So I did the, um, Let's see. I did the Susquehannock Trail. That was kind of my first foray into longer distance backpacking. I think that's like 85 miles or something. But then we immediately jumped over to uh, the Superior Hiking Trail in Minnesota, and we did something like 240 miles over two weeks. That was a sabbatical that I took wow. from work. And that that trail, I really got bit by the bug. I was like, wow, I really – I was like day 10. I was like, man, I only have four more days. That sucks, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's when I started thinking. I was like, you know what? The AT is possible, you know? So a couple years after that, you know, after my buddy Gary hiked it, I, I hiked it. And now we're going for the PCT, you know? So is he going with so, you then? No, he uh, he just had a, a baby last year. He got married a couple years back, so uh, he's on lockdown for at least uh, another six months. So he can't make yep. it. I get that. That totally makes sense. Yeah. So um, you were talking about uh, the Superior Hiking Trail. Mm -hmm. That a buddy of mine just did that a few years ago. I think <laughs> you and I were talking about him earlier. Uh, uh, the Flash. He uh, he did that. He told me that is the loneliest trail he's ever hiked in his life. Really? We saw a whole he bunch said, of people. Yeah, maybe it was just the time of year. I don't know. Do but, you know when he uh, went? He went, I want to say in the fall. That's what we went, right before yeah. the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Because huh. I remember, and a funny story about him when he when he was hiking on that. So he calls me because he, he hasn't seen anybody for a few days. So he calls me, and he goes, hey, man, what's going on? I said, are you hiking? He goes, yeah. And he told me where he was. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I hear him grunt like a uh, thing and i'm yeah. like I'm like dude you okay he goes He's hang pooping. on a second he goes hang on a second <laughs> it would have been great if it was that but uh no he's he's he's, he's <laughs> quiet for a second he gets back out and goes hey man i gotta get off of here i just fell and and put a stick through my leg and oh my i'm God. bleeding everywhere yeah. and so he had to he gets off the phone with me and i'm like crap he's out there by himself and he's not seen anybody for miles. Yeah. And he had he limped his way far. into town. Well, yeah, he limped his way into town, was able to <laughs> oh get God, to uh dude. to some kind of a doctor where they gave him like they cleaned out his wound and gave him antibiotics and all this kind of stuff. And 
they told him you really better take care of that or that's going to get infected you're gonna have a problem <sighs> did he get back but, out on trail oh he finished it absolutely that's awesome beast, dude he beast mode that thing yeah so but yeah wow. like that's that's <laughs> all i know of this of the superior hiking trail because that and, and miyagi on the trail and milos met there okay that, cool that's it that's all i got man that's it it's so, such a great trail that's what I hear. I hear it's way more difficult than it probably you'd think it would be. Yeah, I I was I was surprised. Yeah, yeah. I hear it's a lot of like rolling hills, like it's not like huge climbs, but it just never stops. It's never really flat. Yeah, and it's really rooty. Yeah, yeah. from what I remember. <laughs> so, when you get done with the PCT, uh, and and you're in Canada. And you're excited and you're cheering CDT? No. So a couple reasons. Um, I don't want to leave the family after this because it would take me, think about it, it takes me another five years to save up for that if, right. you know, if that would even happen because it's longer. It's like, what, 3,600 miles or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, that means Logan's seven. First That's, grade. Yeah, I can't. I can't do that. So – the goal is, plus there's a whole bunch of road walking still. That trail technically isn't finished, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Well, they've got um, multiple versions of it you can take. They do. It's, it's a choose, it's your, a choose your, own your own adventure trail. Yeah. And I understand that. And I think it would be awesome to do one day. Uh, but unfortunately, if I'm able to do it when I retire, that's when I'll, that's when I'll do it. That makes sense. So that's, that makes sense. So nothing, I, I'm probably going to, if anything, probably section hike longer trails. But the whole months on end. I think it, it's going to end with the PCT as yeah. much as people probably don't want to hear that, but I'm, I'm trying to be a responsible dad here, guys. You know what I mean? 100% oh, <laughs> get it, man. 100% get it. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to be impressed to see how you deal with being gone from your family. Yeah, like that's, that's actually going to be one of the things I'm watching in your videos. Cause yeah. I, that's, I'm just telling you as a dad, I know how hard that's gotta be even thinking about it. So, uh, just just the way you're going to be able to communicate with your family and how you pull that off is going to be pretty awesome to watch and see how it happens and how it unfolds yeah. for you. So who knows, though? Maybe uh, when Logan gets older, he'll say, Dad, let's go do the CDT together. Scarlett's already asking to do the AT, so I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, wow. I was like, let's get on a three-day trip first, Scarlett. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was it, the, the Strawbridge family? There was like seven or eight of them, and they did the what, fight for together or whatever it was. Something like that. They all they all did that together last year or the year before. Oh, uh, was it last uh, year? I'm talking about somebody that was like six, seven years ago. Oh no, they, they were they were they were after that. But uh, okay, they were a family of like I want to say six, like four kids and two parents. Okay, and they were out there so doing the whole thing. You should watch Fight for Together because they were like nine or maybe eleven. There were a lot of kids in that one. Oh dang! Yeah, See, I, that's <laughs> wow. I don't think I'd want right. to do that. I don't like hiking with ten or eleven people. I couldn't imagine no. doing it with ten or eleven family members. Yeah, because yeah. you, you you know as well as I do, we love our kids, but they fight. Kids yeah. argue. Kids complain. <laughs> they whine. Maybe they had imagine? child services called on them on while on trail, and they had to deal <laughs> with that on trail. I remember watching it like live, like it's when they posted. I mean, but it was pretty really? cool. Really, that's yeah. hilarious. That's hilarious. And they all finished too. Every single one of them finished. <laughs> Dang. The Strawbridges, um, they actually did the Triple Crown. That's what it was. They did the Triple wow. Crown as a family. Wow, that's uh is, is that nuts? Yeah. That that is so cool to accomplish yeah. that as a family, though. Yeah. Jeez. I remember interviewing the kids <laughs> and saying, So you think you'll ever hike again after this? And they're all like, No, we're <laughs> And then two weeks later, man, that was a good trip, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy how that all goes down. Okay. So I'm right. going to ask you some, I want to, I'm going to name some, some gear items just okay. to throw something in here for a second. I'm going to name sure. some gear items, two different ones. And I want you to tell me what you prefer over the other. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so we're, we're going to go with this. We're just going to see what your answers are because I guarantee the people that are in the chat room, which guys, I love you all dearly, but we've had a great conversation going. So I've kind of ignored you guys, but we'll get to you in a little bit. I promise. Um, I'm going to name something you and something else. And you just tell me which one you like better. So sleeping bags or quilts, 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 why quilts? 
uh, just more versatile. You know, if it's too hot, you know, you can always unzip the sleeping bag. But if it's cold and you're just rolling around all the time, you're wasting all that loft behind you because you're compressing it just heavier. I don't know. Yeah. Quilts, quilts, one hundred percent. I know. No matter what type of weather. Oh yeah, yeah. I agree with you one hundred percent. I've got four or five different quilts right now, and they're all different temperature ratings and all that kind of yep. stuff. So, yeah. So, um, tent or hammock? Ugh. I don't know at this point. Oh wow! <laughs> probably, we'll say, probably the hammock. The Nemo tensor was a huge step in the right direction for me. Like I couldn't sleep on the ground until this pad came along. I don't yeah. know what it is. I don't know if it's the baffles or the thickness, but hammocks will always be like number one in my heart. Right. I think. Yeah. Right. No, I get that. I get that a hundred percent. Um, I actually just <laughs> got the uh, Durston gear, uh, the X Pro Mid. Oh, the X, the yeah, X Mid the X Pro Mid? Two, X yeah, Mid Pro yeah, yeah. Two, and that that gave me hope for tents because okay. I get. Tents, for some reason, make me more claustrophobic than hammocks. Hmm. Because I, I, at least in a hammock, I've got a big tarp around me, and I can sit up in it. I can sit, like, on a chair when you're sitting in your hammock and yeah. do my things, and everything's good. But when I get in a tent and I'm, like, all covered up with stuff, I don't know. It just – I'm not a big fan of it as much. Mm -hmm. So, But the X-Mid has kind of made me change my tune a little bit. I'm still a hammock mm -hmm. guy, but I can do that tent. You said all you right. got a one or a two? I got the two. Okay. Yeah, I'm a big guy, man. I can't be doing a one. I don't this know. Is... I don't know how thick it is or yeah. width wise. One person tends to drive me crazy. I just uh, it's too tight for me. Like I said, yeah, claustrophobic, man. I'm claustrophobic. So um let me ask you, uh this is a yes or no. Mountain house. Yes. Ooh, a yes for mountain house. Yes. Now is it is it a conditional yes or is it just yes across the board? Yes. <laughs> uh it depends which one. It, it's it there's a couple like chili mac phew, with fritos in it, delicious. Beef stroganoff, delicious. Um those are kind of the only two I alternate from. Yeah. Cuz if you I don't know if you've anybody's had the eggs, but ugh, those aren't eggs. I don't know what those are. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever put in. My yeah. Mouth. I almost threw up the first time I tried it. I'm like, you know. Yeah. You you know who makes the best eggs is uh is Hacky Hacky Gourmet. Gourmet. Yes. You actually put them in a skillet and you yeah. cook them like eggs. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, those now those are good. I did. Uh, they um. Go ahead. No, I, I'll say I did pictured rocks and I ate those every morning. I was doing keto at the time, and so I I wow. had a very limited yeah. kind of food I could eat on that trail. And I remember I had those eggs every single morning, and they were so good. I was shocked at how good those were. They're um, they actually hooked me up. Uh, they got me um, like I want to say it's about five hundred dollars worth of meals for the PCT. Oh wow! I was like, you guys are because someone, someone. The story goes that someone that watches me works for them or knows one of the people that work there, and then yeah. like a week later they reached out to me and they say, hey, like we'd like to help you on the PCT hike. And I'm like, absolutely. I've been eating like packet gourmet for years now. You know what I mean? They're so delicious. Oh, they are. So, they are. Yeah, I got a giant box ready to fill up with resupply packages for them. So are they your favorite backpacking meals? That I've had so far, yeah. Okay. What are some yeah. that you've you've uh you've been wanting to try but haven't? Um, what is it? Those paleo to go, paleo meals to go or something okay. like that. Yeah. Um peak i haven't had i haven't had a lot it's been mountain house north sides and packet gourmet but i know that uh -huh. you know the the the, 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 yeah. the even the cold the ones you just add cool water or whatever and you put on a yeah. like a tortilla they're just delicious i don't know i don't know maybe yeah. that maybe there's something better but i haven't found anything yet i need to contact some buddies of mine and see if we can get you some peak refuel stuff i'm down yeah because that will know. spoil you dude that okay. stuff will spoil you i promise they're biscuits and gravy when you mm. open it, it's an actual biscuit. <laughs> how do you cook like, it, or how do you? Well, I mean, it's, it's completely it's completely freeze dried. Oh, okay. So you, you just put dried. it down into the gravy. Like I think, okay. uh, here we go. Uh, all things outdoors, peak is amazing. All right, uh, all right. I'll have to pick it up. So we gotta get you hooked up with some of that. I'll tell you another one that's good, but it's stupid expensive. Is Stowaway Gourmet. Okay, I've never heard of them. 
they uh they're way too expensive. I love them to death, and they're really nice people, and they make amazing food. They have like a, it's a bear, no, it's a it's a beer, black bean bison chili. Sounds good, and it's really good. It's really really good. So, um, but yeah, we'll have to get you hooked up on that. Cause uh, hey, I'm down I th- to try. I think you like those peak refuel meals, man. I think okay. you like those. All right. So, coffee or no coffee in the mornings? Oh, I have to have coffee. You don't want to talk to me without coffee. Yes. Cold or hot? All day. Hot. Okay. Good. I'm not. Good. I'm not a cold brew guy. My wife's been trying to get me on cold brew. She has like 20 bottles that she makes every morning. I'm like, I can't. I can't yeah. handle that. <laughs> I don't mind cold brew, but when it's a cool morning and you're out on trail, yeah. hot coffee's always better. Mm-hmm. So are you a uh are you a an instant coffee guy or do you like to bring ground coffee out on your shorter trips? I'm instant. I've I've tried like the the expensive Starbucks via the um whatever the ones in the green packet are I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um but I've tried the expensive coffee. I keep going back to that crappy Taster's Choice stuff. I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah? I just enjoy it. I don't know why. I don't know. It's gross, but it tastes good. <laughs> well, you know as well as I do, when you're on trail, things that shouldn't taste good always taste good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure. Northsides, I'm not going to make Northsides for dinner at my house. No. Ever. No. Mm-mm. But when I'm on trail and I can have this like broccoli cheddar rice. With, that, with buffalo tuna. Mm-hmm. With buffalo tuna or, you know lemon pepper chicken or something you know i'm thinking that's just gourmet food and i'm in heaven you know yeah for sure so after a long hard day okay so we've gotten food we've gotten coffee we've gotten tents we've gotten hammocks we've gotten sleeping stuff let's see backpacks frameless or framed frameless nice i just i just i don't like the hip belt i don't like hip belts i hate them really I like to breathe. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I can't bring a frameless, not with the gear that I'm carrying on the PCT. It just doesn't make sense. But for when it makes sense, absolutely frameless. Well, in your, your ultralight, what is your, what is your uh, uh, base weight? I hate, I hate that base I mean, weight I, nonsense. I, so I, I don't, I don't get into the Grammy weenie stuff, but yeah, you, you've so got to be ultralight to do the frameless. Cause I had a frameless and yeah. I was an ultralight and it was miserable. So, yeah, your shoulders hurt. Yeah, oh, yeah. everybody everybody goes through that. Uh, so the, the magic number, right, the, the, the 10 pounds, I, I think is a good thing to shoot for. If your frameless backpack included with that weight is, is 10 pounds, I think people are good for frameless. Yeah. But, you know, if you're carrying seven days of food in that 10-pound base weight, you know what right. I mean, or four liters of water, it just doesn't make sense. The whole ultralight thing, sorry, I'm like off on a tangent. No, no, you go like, off on your tangent, man. That's uh, what we're here for. The, the people that just look at the freaking 10 pound number, which was me, but then I learned, right? Right. It's a right. mindset. Like there is no ultralight camp chair. It doesn't exist because you don't need to carry it, right? Right. If you carry a camp chair, you're not ultralight, even if you're at a five pound base weight. It's the whole mentality. And that's an extreme example, you chair people. So don't jump on me. I'm oh, saying, you're good, man. You're good. You know, if you just look at it, like, what do I actually need to hike the trail? Your base weight could be 14 pounds and you are still ultralight. As long as you're carrying just what you need to be safe, you're not borrowing filters from your friend, that kind of stuff. You have a proper first aid kit. That is ultralight to me. Don't look at the numbers, though. No, that's that's great. That's great. Now, I will say I I tend to hike as light a weight as I can with all of the comforts I can get. Yeah, I don't even pretend like I do bring a chair with me because hey, I am fine. I'm 50 years old. I got jacked up knees. Are you and... really 50? You don't look at yeah, it at all, well, man. Thank you. I wow. appreciate it. Yeah, I got a bad back. I got bad knees, and I don't want to get on the. I don't want to get off the ground. So that's why I like hammocks better. That's why I like yeah. chairs better. You know, it's a whole lot easier to get out of bed in the morning out of a hammock than it is out of absolutely. Like a tent. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so I'm I'm very much a. I consider myself the really lightweight comfort backpacker and that's cool uh, that is but, that is my you know, world that i live in just don't like the fights the fights on the reddit so oh, oh my god, god. It drives me nuts dude yeah we we call reddit the the toxic landscape of backpacking they've really gone downhill the past couple of years oh man everybody's just trying to prove each other wrong oh, it's crazy god. it's crazy yeah. so okay so with that said 
So you went with a frameless pack. Now, mm. trekking poles or no trekking poles? I like trekking poles. Yeah. I think they help even so sometimes I find myself just holding one in the right hand, you know what I mean? But I don't know. It's just so whenever I don't use trekking poles and my hands are just down at my sides, my hands like go numb. Mine swell. So it's nice to be able to sw yeah, mine swell exactly. It's just nice to be able to switch, you know, the grip, kind of get the blood flow going. Yeah. You know? I know I I've I've done some trips without trekking poles and I find myself holding my straps with my hands just to keep my hands up. Because the blood, like you said, all that blood flows down to your hands while you're hiking miles. Yeah. And so I'll just put my thumbs in behind my straps and just kind of hold them right. there and get my hands up yeah. a little bit to like let the blood. I've flow done that out on day them. hikes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm it's with you on the trekking thing. poles, man. I'm with you on the trekking poles. So if we're on the topic of trekking poles, are we carbon or aluminum? Uh, I hate carbon poles, and I'll tell you why. Um, at least on the East Coast for you East Coast hikers, um, I've snapped my carbon poles on the at probably eight to ten times and i kept wow. making them luckily you know i kept making them like you know how there comes in different sections so you have three sections of poles yeah. so it would break at the bottom then i would put the middle section up in this side and you know adjust it so they were all the same length but i'd, I'd rather it bend and be able to be bent back than just completely snap and be useless right. at one point i was hiking with without a tip on the pole because it just snapped off the whole thing so I have a, I have a pair. They're actually, I don't know if you've been looking at the new aluminum stuff. I can't remember what my Lakeys are now, but they're lighter than my carbon poles that I used on the AT. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm going to have to look into those. I've yeah, got a pair Macaulay. of the Gossamer gear ones. Yeah. And my, my buddy Togs had that and they ended up breaking like four, three or four times for her. Yeah. And it's just it's just not worth it. Especially they're overpriced. But look up at the Makalu light, whatever that aluminum is that's lighter than the carbon fiber that I used previously at least. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely check those out. Right now I'm I think I'm doing uh some black diamond car yeah. um aluminum the poles. Distance. That I've got. Oh aluminum. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I've got some of those because 'cause I'm I uh I actually have one of the Gossamer gears snapped on me. Like it didn't snap, it cracked. And so once it's cracked, I'm not taking it back out. And it actually yeah. cracked on the um, the little tightening thing. It wasn't the pole itself. It was the thing that tightens uh, the pole. The, the locks. Yeah. So that was like, it, eh, it, I don't know about that. Yeah. And as Jeff said, yeah, Cascade Mountain Tech, they make a pretty beefy carbon pole. My wife uses those, and we've already cracked, cracked one on our first trip. So. Oh, wow. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, just, don't, I just haven't had good luck with them. Yeah. yeah. Well, and – I don't know what West Coast hiking's like. I've not spent a lot of time out west. Doing any yeah, hiking. me either. <laughs> so I I can't speak for West Coast, but I know like if you were in the east side of the states, I mean we got roots and rocks and crap yep. everywhere, and, and they get stuck uh, under those roots and rocks. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. all the time. So it's like you you kind of have to be really careful with something as fragile as carbon to not right. snap those. Absolutely. All right. So trail runners, I'm not going to ask waterproof or not waterproof. I already know the answer to that one. But uh, what are the what are the uh, what are the ones that you're using right now? Which I'm really track? liking the the Topo Athletics, um, the Terra Ventures specifically. Those are the only yeah. ones I've used by them. They're like a quality ultra. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know the ultra, the Lone Peaks, the tail the tail cap always falls off falls on the apart. first three miles. Uh, I've been using the ones that the Terra Venture fours, a hundred ninety miles on them. Yeah, okay. 90 miles on them, the tail, the tail cup, tail cap, <laughs> toe cap, wow, is still on them. So, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've got a pair of Topo Ultra Ventures. Okay, um, yeah, my dad was using them in the Grand Canyon. They're like a little bit more cushion. A little bit more cushion, but the thing I didn't like about them was uh, it was hard to get the center of the shoe tied down tight enough. I actually mm -hmm. messed up my foot last summer in those where my foot slid inside the shoe when it went sideways on a on a rock or something and uh, my foot slid sideways and I jacked up my foot on a hike hmm. using those so yeah so for me I I'd love to I'm I'll probably try some Terra Ventures at some point the Ultra Ventures though that's what they did to me and I wasn't too fond of my foot I found I couldn't get them tight enough around the the bridge of my feet to well, where if they you would like, slide around if you like the cushion in the Ultra Ventures, get the Terra Ventures and get a cushiony insole like the um the Trailblazer Trailblazer Comforts. Yeah. So they'll have the same like drop it or same stack in them basically. Well, I'm doing the Hoka's right now. Which, okay. 
I'm really liking those. You don't roll your ankles in those? No, uh-uh. No, I was rolling mine all the time in the Olympus really? from, from Altra. Yeah, I had to I had to back off. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I did the speed goats. So Okay. Um those are doing really well. I'm actually they're probably the, my favorite ones I've used so far, in all honesty. Um I, I don't do well with the zero drop. Like zero drop's not a good one for me. Like I know a lot of people love the zero drop, but yeah, and I can't. I honestly can't tell a difference between the the topos and the and the uh, altros. Yeah, maybe a little bit for the heel striking yeah. thing, but that's I it. will say the, the the one thing I liked about the ultra ventures they had a rock plate, and yeah. that was real nice. That was real nice, mm. especially after a long day. Like you right. get about fifteen miles and more into a hike, and all of a sudden, like every rock or root, you can feel it through your shoe. Those mm-hmm. rock plates are awesome for that. Yeah, but you can also accomplish that with an insole, though. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's just like find a shoe that fits you well and then adjust around it kind of thing for me. Oh, yeah. So here's the question then. Do you put insoles in all your shoes? I do now. Um, I realize on the AT that my arches were falling. It's very, very uncomfortable. So I need something with a little bit more of an arch. I've been I've been loving the Superfeet Trailblazers. They're there's there's several different models of it. There's yeah, they just work for me, so I just never left after the AT. Nice. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay, last question. Mm-hmm. Cold soak or no cold soak? I would like to try it. I can't say either way if I like cold soaking. I've never cold soaked before though. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've never tried it either, and I, I see people doing it. And I just think to myself, man, I really like eating those warm meals. At the end of the day, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I have to. I'd have to give it a try. Right. So, all right. Let's flip this thing and, and talk about something completely different now. Because sure, I remember watching your videos early, like back uh-huh. before you did the AT, um, and talking to you now, watching your videos now, you smile a lot more, and and that's not to say you didn't smile before, but you just seem like ever since the AT and getting married. You've been a different guy. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I think if you'd ask my wife, she'd say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You think it's just being a family guy now and having kids? and I think um, something clicked in my head on the AT. And, yeah, the family definitely adds to it. But I think it all started with whatever happened in Vermont, roughly. Yeah. For me on the AT. Yeah. That's it, it's just, it was just kind of a – like I said, you're – your AT uh, videos, like a lot of people do them, and it's all the same thing. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about, right? Here's I do. a random shot yeah. of my feet. Here's we get to camp. Here's <laughs> random shots of people doing nothing, but I'm putting it in my video anyways. Um, right. Here's food. Here's you know. Let's talk about everybody's gear. It's not relatable. You were, you were telling a story the whole time, mm-hmm. and I remember Vermont very well because we get to that part in the in this series of videos. And you're just walking on the trail, and you just start smiling huge in the yeah. video. And I just remember – I remember watching that going, what just happened? Because it was like <laughs> – it was it was visible. You know what I mean? Like it was yeah. so visible when we were watching the video. Um, how, how do you explain that to people when they ask you about the AT? Because I know from, from what I've heard from you with the AT, the AT wasn't just a hike. No, it was something else, which I'm – I'm not like, I'm not saying that, you know, if you're having troubles, like if you're having like depression, whatever, like that hiking an AT or a PCT or any long distance trail will just magically fix these things. I went into the hike, not expecting anything. Like I said, at the beginning of this, of this uh, podcast, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened. There was, there was a time where I I just, I kind of zoned out. I saw a white blaze in a tree. I zoned out and Ever since that moment, I don't call it a. I don't, I'm not. I'm not religious. I'm not religious at all. Mm-hmm. Call it a God moment, spiritual moment, one with nature moment. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I made a whole video about it because I still can't explain it. Yeah. Uh, but something happened that day, and it's kind of completely reversed the way I thought. Like I was. I was at the edge of reversing it, but then it pushed me over. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild, man. Like I it can't is. imagine. It's crazy. I'm going to shoot straight. I cannot wait to watch your PCT video. I mean, are you, how are you going to do those? Is it going to be kind of similar to what you did with the AT or? Are yeah, you I'm just, I'm just going to 
try to film a little bit more of scenery, but I want to keep my thoughts in the video because I think that really connects with certain people that need connected to. Yeah. And that's what I kind of learned on the AT, just in emails and comments. And, you know, even after the trail, people still come up to me. It's like, hey, your documentary, like, it's it's crazy to, like, hear that feedback because I'm just like a dude just shooting film in the woods. Like, I'm, I'm not anybody special. But when you right. connect with someone, you're like, I should keep doing this. Yeah. You know, I can help one person along the way. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Well, like I said, I it's hard for me to connect with a lot of trail videos because after you've watched so many of them, they all kind of like feel the same. Yeah. And so when you find one where there's a story interwoven within it, it's not mm -hmm. just about this trail and seeing the scenes of it and seeing the cool places. And, you know, I, I can't tell you how many pictures and videos I've seen of McAfee knob at this point in my life, yeah. but, but I, to see a transformation of a person while they're hiking the trail is just something that's, I mean, not to sound corny, but it's, it's special, you know, to be able to see something like that. So I'm yeah. really interested to see how the PCT goes for you. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm really nothing, interested. Might, to maybe nothing happens. happens. Maybe it's just a hike. It'll probably just suck. Yeah, I'm just kidding. It's it will. Probably be awful. It probably will. It's probably the worst <laughs> don't even, PCT Don't I've even ever. unsubscribe. Don't even watch. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> who's watching right now, just go ahead and unsubscribe to Frozen. It's going to be awful. It's going to be terrible. No. Um, okay, so we're at a point. We're at a point here. Oh, you got an Outland on here. Outland. Oh, he he's so really, fun to hang out with. I don't know if you've dude, ever hung man. out with him. Yeah. We, we've talked about it. We've just never had the chance, but uh, he says he's a rock star at trail days. I was getting uh, pulled off to the side quite a bit at trail days. Yeah. Getting in pictures for, taken. Uh, Virginia. Yeah. That's awesome. It man. was cool. It was really cool. That's awesome. So, um. There's a there's a tradition we have on this podcast, and you and I talked about it beforehand. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you're prepared for this. I mean, in, probably in, not. <laughs> here, here you go. Pizza Ninja's already gone on here. Poop time. Come on. So, do you have any good poop stories from the trail? Any trail that you've been on in your backpacking career? Like gross stories, or what do you guys want to hear? It could be gross. <laughs> it could be funny. It could be embarrassing. It could be whatever the heck you want to tell. Okay, I got a gross one from the Superior Hiking Trail. All I don't right, think I've ever it. told this story either. <laughs> Maybe I did. So we at the um, so the Superior Hiking Trail, uh, like I said, we did 240 miles over two weeks. Uh, we resupplied three times. Uh, we got back at the trail. We have to stay in the shelters, and each shelter area has a um, like a toilet, a latrine toilet in the middle of nowhere, no cover. It's just kind of at the campsite right right all right so one night um the backpacking meals hit me real hard <laughs> at like the three in the morning attacks yeah yeah it attacked and i was meandering over to the uh this is gonna be so gross i don't know why i'm telling this story <laughs> <laughs> and uh I, me I meander over to the latrine i lift up the lid and do my business and I go back, <laughs> it was real cold that night. It was, it was gross. It was just like, oh my God, it's so like, you know, when you sit down on a toilet seat, you're like, oh my God, I just want to get this yes. over with. Yes. Okay. Um, Jesus. Okay. So I get back in the hammock, pull, you know, I pull my pants up, get back in the hammock. And I'm like, oh, what is that smell? What the heck is that smell? And I'm like feeling around. I was like, did I not wipe good enough or what the heck is going on here? Dude, I sat and poop on the latrine toilet. It was on. It had somebody missed the hole and did it on the seat, and oh, I like threw it in my man. mouth. It was so gross, dude. Gary had it. Gary had a super big laugh at that whenever I did that. But I, oh I will my never, God. I will never forget that ever. It Lesson so learned: nasty. always look mm -hmm. before you sit. Yeah, I was trying not to wake anybody up, so I'm not using like my headlamp shining it out to everybody because it's right at the campsite. You know what I mean? Oh man, Ugh. that's awful. That's awful. The worst part about that is you pulled your pants up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I washed off in a stream the next day. Oh yeah. And sanitized my liner and everything. Oh yeah, I believe it, man. Terrible. I believe it. And now yeah. you've just <laughs> gotten more street cred than you ever had before. Probably <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> So, hey, real quick, we're, 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 believe it or not, we are almost an hour into this thing. 
And uh, can you tell people the best way to find you online? Because I know as you, you as you get ready to do this, it starts in May, right? Is when you start hiking? April, actually, April twelfth. Okay, I'll be on there. Yeah. Oh, well, you're just a few weeks uh, away then. Yeah, it's like four weeks away. Yep. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm on uh, Instagram. Um, you can find me at Frozen's Adventures, I believe, and uh, also filming on YouTube. Videos will be delayed by two weeks, but again, Frozen's Outdoor Adventures. You can find me there. Yeah, and I can promise everybody who's who's on here right now, who's watching, or if you're listening on the audio, uh, get on there and watch these. Um, I, I'm not trying to butter him up, guys. Like I'm not trying to like make him feel good about himself. The end of his AT hike, the the video collage that he put together at the end of that was awesome. I don't get emotional watching hiking videos, and freaking frozen made me emotional watching a stupid hiking video at the end of the AT. So, uh, it was, it was just really good. And so just be prepared. It's going to be, it's going to be great stuff. I can't wait to follow along, man. I'm just going to be hoping for no snow coming down after yeah, you start too. it. Uh, no, no forest fires. Uh, I'm just hoping that you actually do get to do a straight footpath the whole way. I'm hoping that works Maybe. out for you, man. It hasn't been done in many years, but I'm hoping we'll see. We'll see what happens, but man, I appreciate you being on here. Yeah, no uh, problem. Especially without Jeremiah here, because Jeremiah has all the personality. So it's <laughs> like without Jeremiah here, you had to put up with me, which that's impressive in and of itself. So thank you for being on, man. If you can hang out in the green room for no just problem. a few minutes, I'm gonna sign off. Absolutely, here, and I'll see you yep. in a few seconds. Thanks, everybody. All right, guys. Not a whole lot needs to be said. Just great having Frozen on here. Uh, just this guy has got so much uh, knowledge when it comes to hiking and backpacking, and it's so cool to have him on here to share all that with us. Guys, I am so sorry I haven't been able to get over here and uh, look at the comments. Um, I promise they will get looked at. All of you who made comments about Jeremiah not having merch, you're all correct. He doesn't, and he probably won't. I am going to promise you, though, there will be merch this summer for the Backpacking Podcast. Because I'm the one in charge of it. So it's going to happen. Um, also, just as a reminder, April 1st, we're going to be doing an in-person live stream podcast event at j &H Outdoors in Lexington, Kentucky. That's going to start at 8 p.m. on Monday, April 1st. And Rob Pelton is going to be there from Leave No Trace and the Rob Pelton YouTube channel. So it's going to be a good night. I don't know how it's going to work. We're still trying to figure all that out. But it's going to be a great night. And we hope that some of you guys are going to be able to come out and be a part of that. If you're near central Kentucky or you just want to come down and hang out with us for a night, come on out. It's going to be a great time uh, for myself and for Jeremiah, who will be back next week. We will catch you guys on the next one. 